Canis Minor contains only two stars brighter than the fourth magnitude, the famous yellow-white F-class star of Procyon, and Gomesa, also known as Beta Canis Minoris. The constellation's dimmer stars were noted by Johann Bayer, who named eight stars including Alpha and Beta, as well as John Flamsteed, who numbered 14. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in the next episode of our constellation series, we're going to be looking more closely at the constellation known as the Little Dog. So, let's get to it. A small constellation in the Northern Celestial Hemisphere, Canis Minor's name is Latin for Lesser Dog. This isn't where the slightly sad secondary status of the constellation ends, unfortunately. Maybe you don't agree with me, but I've always felt that Procyon, its brightest star, plays second fiddle somewhat to the brightest star to the south of Sirius. Be that as it may, Canis Minor and Major in legend both follow Orion the Hunter through the sky. Procyon, Alpha Canis Minoris, is one of my favourite stars, and I promise not to spend too long talking about it, as we have done other videos on Procyon in this channel, so it needs little introduction to the followers of this channel. The seventh brightest star in the night sky as well as one of the closest, a yellow-white F-class main sequence star, it also has a white dwarf companion. Interestingly, Procyon A is about 1.5 times the mass of our Sun, whereas Procyon B is around 0.6 times the mass, meaning the binary pairing share a mass of slightly over double our solar system. Procyon A obviously though, overwhelms B, and strangely in the constellation it depicts the relatively innocuous position of the belly of the dog. Beta Canis Minoris, or Gomesa, forms the dog's neck. A star of a much lesser fame, Gomesa is a bright blue-white B-class main sequence star that lies some 160 light years from Earth. Gomesa was strangely once called Ashira al Gamisa, or the Sirius with bleary eyes in Arabic, and has a mass and radius both measuring exactly 3.5 times that of our Sun. So Gomesa is an extremely powerful star that emits a luminosity of as many as 195 times that of the Sun, or indeed 28 times in as intrinsically bright as Procyon. Obviously the sheer distance between ourselves and Gomesa is the reason it does not outshine Procyon in our skies. In our first graphic today, let's imagine then how close Gomesa would have to approach our solar system to equal the magnitude of Procyon. Procyon itself currently shines with a visible apparent magnitude of plus 0.34, so for Gomesa Beta Canis Minoris to shine equally in the sky, we would have to move it as close as 60 light years distance as we now see depicted. So to recap, Procyon at 11.46 light years and Gomesa at 60 would become equal partners in our skies. We continue to move Gomesa now and we approach the distance of Procyon itself. At 11.46 light years, we do not currently have a star in the class of Gomesa, and this is pretty evident as we now see the star shining at an incredible minus 3.25, rivaling everything but Venus, the Moon, and our Sun. We must remember that each magnitude represents 2.5 times more brightness than the previous, so at last, Canis Minor would grasp that elusive gold medal, because at 11.46 light years, Gomesa would strip Sirius of its title of brightest extrasolar star by stunning six times over. Canis Minor also holds another fascinating secret, Leuton Star. It's a ninth magnitude red dwarf, and the solar system's next closest stellar neighbour in the constellation after Procyon. The interesting thing about Leuton Star, which unfortunately is not bright enough to carry a Canis Minor designation, even though it lies within its boundaries, is that it is almost the perfect star for colonisation. I don't want to delve too deeply, as we've already covered this in its own video, which I will link in the card above, so don't forget to check out that for more information. But Leuton Star is a member of the very highest elite, in that not only does it have planets, but it is a red dwarf that does not experience regular solar flares. Leuton Star is a stable star and could potentially harbour life for many hundreds of billions, if not even trillions of years. I have the intention of creating a video of this type of red dwarf soon, so don't forget to stay tuned for updates as to and when I have time to complete them. Next we must mention the fourth magnitude HD 66141 that carries the designation Lambda Canis Minoris. It is a star located approximately 254 light years away which interestingly has almost the same mass as the Sun at 0.98 solar masses, yet has evolved into an orange giant towards the end of its life cycle. Fascinatingly, it was discovered to have a planet in 2012, and not only that, but the planet was thought to be around 1.2 astronomical units from the star, and have an orbit of around 480 days. A super Jupiter of over 6 Jovian masses, it doesn't sound all that interesting though from a habitational point of view, 
But again, let's look over those facts. At one point in time, Lambda Canis Minoris, with the same mass as the Sun, would have been a star not too dissimilar. Slightly dimmer, but capable of heating a planet in that area to have liquid water. In our exoplanet series, we looked at exomoons, so theoretically, just like Jupiter has Callisto, Europa and Ganymede as potential life harbouring worlds in suspended animation, this world could well have had moons with liquid water, and at six times the gravitational influence of Jupiter, it may well have held on to moons the size of our Earth, if not even larger. What this means, of course, is that Lambda Canis Minoris, we are potentially looking into our future, Life may have evolved there, only to be destroyed in the fires as the star itself expands into its giant phase, which as our own sun will do some 5 billion years or so from now. Lying directly south of Gemini's bright stars Castor and Pollux, Canis Minor is bordered by Monoceros, the unicorn to the south, Gemini to the north, Cancer to the northeast and Hydra to the east. Covering 183 square degrees, Canis Minor ranks 71st of the 88 constellations in size. For those of us lucky enough to live in the Northern Hemisphere, Canis Minor appears prominently in the southern sky during our winter, and it's most prominent around 10pm during mid-February. Delta Canis Minoris throws up an interesting conundrum in that there are actually three stars all in the same line of sight, and designated Delta 1, 2 and 3. All three are white stars ranging from the F class to the A class, and lie many many light years away. Unfortunately for sightseers and tourists, Although the Milky Way passes through much of Canis Minor, it contains few deep sky objects. Possibly the most interesting sight is the NGC 2508 13th magnitude galaxy, estimated at around 205 million light years distance, with a diameter of around 80,000 light years. But if we look more closely, it becomes clear that it's actually a pair of near adjacent galaxies that appear to be interacting with each other. The elliptical and spiral galaxy are thought to measure 55,000 light years in diameter. Canis Minor is a small constellation in the northern celestial hemisphere. It contains two bright stars that dominate its tiny frame. But if we look further and further into the deep, we find a small red dwarf, Leuton star, that could one day be our primary target for colonisation. The fascinating yet dim Lambda Canis Minoris gives us an insight into what the future may hold for our solar system, and also whets the appetite in our search for exomoons. Just like in life, the little dogs are never happy to play second fiddle to their larger companions. They yap and bark with the same volume. They know too that they contain some fascinating secrets. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. On some channel news, I would like to congratulate the What's Next channel as it just passed 1,000 subscribers. I'll link this in the card above and if you've not checked out the What's Next channel, I would highly recommend it as one of my favourites, if not indeed my favourite of all other YouTube space channels. If you'd like to support this channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you that have already done so. And if you have any of other videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. Maybe it will be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.